Right guys, here we are. Welcome to Newell's Oh Boys, the new Let's Play on the channel. It's going to take us all the way through the summer and the autumn into the winter when we finally get our hands on FM23. Now it's the start of a new series, so very, very important. I get as many eyes on this as possible, so I'd appreciate it if you, number one, smash a like on today's video. And number two, stay tuned at a certain point in today's episode, I will be giving away... A shirt, a Newell's Old Boys shirt. So make sure you stick around for that. Subscribe as always. Videos every Wednesday and Sunday at 7. And there is going to be bonus content for the Patreons. A weekly Patreon video as well. That will be directly on my Patreon page. Kind of a behind the scenes looking at things such as training, tactics. Maybe a comprehensive highlights game, etc. First video for you Patreons will be a taking a look around our Wonder Kids. All right. All that being said, let's get into episode number one of Newell's. Okay, here we are. So this is the home screen. This is the club. Why Newell's? Why Argentina? Well, number one, I haven't actually managed in Argentina before. Only managed in South America once. I think that was back in about 2018, 19, when I managed Flamenco. I wanted a little bit of a harder challenge because I did find the Flamenco, one of the biggest clubs in Brazil and in South America, quite easy. So I wanted a little bit of a harder challenge. And boy, have I think I have found one with Newell's. Now, obviously, Newell's are quite famous, not because of just the badge, but because of the players, the managers that have come through. Obviously, Maradona had a very short stint there towards the end of his career. This is where Messi started, Batistuta, Pochettino, Walter Samuel, Gabriel Heinze, Maxi Rodriguez, Marcelo Bielsa took them to a league title, Gerard, uh, Gerard Martino as well, Tata, who went on to then manage Barcelona, also won a league title with Newell's, and it's a bit of a sleeping giant, I think. History-wise, they've not won an absolute massive amount of trophies. No Copa Libertadores. Obviously, Copa Libertadores, for people that don't know, is like the South American Champions League. We are in the Sud America this year, which is kind of the Europa League. So hopefully, maybe we can have a really good run in that. But as you can see, two runner-up titles in the Copa Libertadores, 88 and 92. We've won the league three times. We've also won because during the last 10 years in Argentina, the league structure has swapped and changed, opening and closing stages, different types of formats. Um, I think, I believe over the next first three or four seasons, my league will constantly change, but it has settled down a little bit. As you can see, they won the opening stage in 2005 and the closing stages in 1992, 2013. That's basically the first half of the season, one trophy, second half of the season, another trophy. That's basically that. So, not enough in terms of the trophy in the cabinet, considering the amount of players that have come through at Newell's. And as you can see, great youth facilities, continental reputation, and great training facilities. So I'm thinking, and having a look, as I said, Patreon video will go in more depth into the Wonder Kids. I am going to show you a few Wonder Kids, don't worry, in today's video. However, I want a nice little mix. I want to bring through the youth, and we're going to talk about a pathway in a later episode of creating a real player pathway through my 18s, sorry, my 20s, my reserves, and then to my seniors to make sure we get a really good conveyor belt of local, well, Argentinian, but in, in particular, local talent. Now, that's the youth. I would like to bring the occasional name across. We need that person who's going to boost sales. Obviously, there's Lionel Messi. However, I think just because of his age and the way we are financially at the moment, as you could see... Our finances are not great. We're obviously got a, we've got a look, we've got a loan as well that is kicking in, 180 grand per month for a year. So that's going to set us back even more. So I think we may miss out on Messi before he retires. However, I would like to look at Argentinian players that are maybe scattered across Europe, and then are looking at one last not payday, but coming back home to Argentina before they retire. So a nice mixture of quality young Argentinian talent bring back for some of them. Argentinian players that have played in Europe, mix that together and see if we can have a little bit of success with Club Atletico Newell's Old oh Boys. Now, if you weren't aware as well, they were formed by an English family, uh, Isaac Newell, Newell's, Englishman who moved to Argentina, was one of the pioneers of Argentinian football back in the early 1900s. His son then formed the club and named it after his father. Little bit of history for you. Fascinating history, by the way. And as you can see, the stadium, 42,000, which is good. The Marcelo Alberto Bielsa, named after Bielsa. Um, but it needs a little bit of work. It was built in 1911. So 
there's going to be, I think for us to move on to that next stage of competing with River, Boca, there's going to be a lot of infrastructure work to be done in terms of balancing our finances and making sure we can keep our great youth facilities, great training facilities, but we really need to maybe look at the stadium at some point. Those are overall goals. For this season, the board has been pretty generous. A lot of them are just to see how you get on, which is good. So we're in the Copa Sudamerica, which is the South American version of the Europa League. Be competitive. So kind of the pressure is kind of off there. I think we can do that. Mid-table finish in the Argentinian Premier Division. Quarter-final minimum for the Copa Argentina and the League Cup. Don't be outclassed. Now, the League Cup, because of the format and how everything's changing at the moment, the League Cup starts at the start of the season. So these are my fixtures. My league campaign starts in July. Boca Juniors, the 18th of July. However, we're early in February. So we're, what, six, five, five months away from the start of the league season. And we have been given league cup games to get us through February, March and April. And I imagine some kind of more games in May, potentially even in June. So with the board only wanting us to not be outclassed in our league group, which just... We do have Boca, but we don't have River, which all obviously always helps. We've got to get into the top four to get into the quarterfinals. I think we have the opportunity to really use this as an extra massive preseason. Maybe blood a few youngsters. I have called up a couple of youngsters from the under 20s just to help fill positions. I've not been able to sign any players because we haven't got any money. No, nothing in the wage budget, nothing in the transfer budget. So transfers, zero. So we need to call on a few youth players. So I'm hoping that this here gives us the opportunity not to rotate, but just to have a little feel, work and tweak the tactic as we go. Okay, let's see who we are dealing with in season one. This is my squad now, there is an Argentinian rule, foreigner rule. I think it's about six. We'll take a look, little look at that in a minute when we look at the, the crazy league and how it's formatted for this season. However, there is potentially some superstars. As you can see, I've got a good handful of players that are under the age of 20. In particular, Juan Sforza. He is going to be my main man. Now, I'm guessing at some point we're going to lose this man Already considered by Manchester City as a target. We have signed very quickly to a new deal, um, which has put me over the wages. But four-year deal, I'm going to be starting him in a different role. He's going to be starting as my false nine. We may swap it to a deep line forward on support, so something we can work on during this League Cup run. But Juan Sforza, at the moment, is our little superstar. Not to be completely outclassed by Nicolas Castro. He's going to be my sort of like my attacking central midfielder. We may change his role to sort of like a shadow striker. Four and a half star potential. He's a little bit older than Sforza. So as you can see, physicals need a little bit. But he looks like at this level as well, he looks like he's going to be a good player. Technique, passing, long shot, first touch. Uh, dribbling needs a little bit of work. But decisions, vision, all may improve over the next couple of seasons and um, so we're really going to work on those two have been the real part the real main part of the team we've got a couple of old boys in as well just to help us with experience a little bit a player called Pablo Perez looks very good ball went in very good mentals will help us along the way the, a lot of these ones I would like to keep just not for as long as possible while they're useful for the team stamina is still good strength still good for a player at his age so he no doubt will be key for us probably in the first two seasons and then once again we'll need to look at replacing some of these so we've got a nice mixture there's a little bit of a drop off because it goes 35 30 30 it goes 35 33 30 29 year old couple of older players on loan and then we have a bit of a drop from 25 to 24 to 23 and then all these players here are all 23 and younger we've got a nice little loanie as well in fabian angel or angel should i say fabian angel Someone that looks really nice and uh, a few others scattered about. One's come up from our youth team, Marco Campagnaro, 17 years old. He's my backup left back because we've only got one left back. So he's going to get some first team football this year. And Patricio Acevedo. I may butcher these names. I apologise. A little bit difficult some of these. But anyway... Patricio looks like he may be a nice little player. Physically, really, really strong for the age of 18. We just need to work on his technicals. Tackling's 13, though, which is pretty good at 18. Um, he is soon to be 19, but I think he will be decent little backup for us, potentially 
Some of these players will be excellent in our league and maybe not quite good enough to move into Europe. So we need to try and keep hold of a few and not just try and sell all of our best players if we can. At the moment, I think the board will stop us from rejecting deals. So we're just going to have to make sure contracts are done as best we possibly can to ensure we don't allow players to go out too cheaply. Now, youth-wise, we've got a really good youth system. We've got an under-20s and a reserve. So the reserves play in their own reserve division. Now, what we're going to do with this player pathway is we're going to make sure, as you can see, the squad is too big. So as we go, I am going to be clearing out as many players as possible. If they do not look like they are not going to be anywhere near reaching the level that I want them to be, they will be released. This is going to be the hotbed for my best young talent. So any players, even if they're 15, 16, they're coming through, they're looking like a superstar, they're going to be immediately put into the reserves. Obviously, I can't do that this season because we've got way too many players. But as you can see, there is a lot of potential in this squad. Loads of five stars. A couple of them as well. 17 years old. Jeremy Perez Tika. 14 pace, 14 finishing. Looks like a little bit of a poacher, but it says he could potentially be favourite position, false nine. So there is one. In the under 20s, and in the under 20s, what we're going to do is just hold on 20 players that we're not 100% sure on. There is once again a huge squad, but we're really going to try and fast forward, fast track the players that have got a considerable amount of talent. And then some other ones, because there is a lot of players in here that are around four star, four and a half star. Um, they may find themselves in the under 20s just for the first, first couple of seasons and then look at moving them into the reserves maybe when they hit 18, when they maybe develop a little bit more physically. Um, we do have Shamel Batistuta. I will get his face, but this is Gabriel Batistuta's son. He is a Qatari. He was born when Batistuta, towards the end of his career, went and played in Qatar, I think for Qatar, 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 Qatar. All-stars towards the end of his career. Uh, we'll keep a track of him. He's got some nice little technicals. 12 pace for his 17. 11 passing, 12 technique. Dribbling 13, first touch 14. So there's, there's half a chance. Potential three. He's maybe the one of those players that we just keep it in around the, amongst the reserves for his sort of like career. Can be one of the older players in the squad. But the main two players are Giovanni Chivarano. He is a winger. 15 years old, and he's already got first touch of 14, dribbling 14, pace 13. He strengths 5, which for a 15-year-old isn't bad. Passing 14, determination 17. That is a tremendous, tremendous start. Personality as well, if you're interested in personality traits, fairly determined. Hopefully, we can make something out of him. And the other one, Pablo Altamirano, is another midfielder. This time, just a little bit more technical. He needs to work on his strength. Strength of one, but at the age of 16, he just turned 16 as well, literally like last week at the game. First touch, 14. Long shots, 14. Passing, 14. Technique, 11. Vision, work rate, 13 and 12. Pace of 12. Acceleration and agility. I'm a little bit undecided. Be interesting. Let me know your thoughts. Do I work on his technicals in training or do we really look at building up that strength? Is that strength going to really cost me if he's playing a bit of a central midfielder on attack? Mazala, Shadow Striker, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. All right, now, before we move into tactic, it is shirt giveaway time. Now, these are not 100% real, I'm going to be totally honest, but it looks pretty good, and I'm happy to give one away to anybody who writes down in the comments. By the way, number one, you need to be a subscriber, so make sure you've subscribed to the channel. And to enter the giveaway, all I want you to do is let me know your favourite Argentinian footballer of all time. Very simple, just put it down in the comments. I will pick a winner and on, I'm gonna give it two weeks. From two weeks today, I will announce a winner on episode, probably what will that be? Three, four, five of Newell's Old Boys. All right, there's the giveaway. Get entering right now. Last little thing before we go, I will just show you the league. It is 26 teams. Now, for this season, we only play, I think it's 25. Yeah, we play 25 league games. We play teams each other once. We're only predicted to finish 16th, which does not get us into the Copa Sudamerica. Look at the amount of places that are available. The idea is to really kick us on financially wise 
I think we really need to get into Copa Bridge Door Libertadores. Uh, we need to get into that. I'm not quite sure if anyone's aware of how well the money takes off. Obviously, Champions League in Europe, you get in there, it's money, money, money. I'm not expecting it to be nowhere near the Champions League kind of numbers, but will that make a massive difference to me and to the club if we can get into the Copa Libertadores? It'll be interesting to know your thoughts. Okay, that is that. There is one weird league rule that if you weren't aware, relegation is based on average points. Now, luckily, we're okay. So I think they take average points by the looks of it over a three-year period. Obviously, 2020 was cut because of COVID. So it kind of helps the teams that have established and really doesn't help the teams that have just come up because what they have to do, any teams that have just come up and have not played in the top league for three years, they have just one season of out to get their average points. So if they have a, you know, a season where they're looking at being just above relegation in terms of the main league, they will probably find themselves relegated. I'm not quite sure. Is there a relegation? There isn't a line, but maybe that's because of just because of the average points. I don't think we'll be looking at relegation. I can't see anything. Oh, there we go. Points from the season will be used in the average points table for 2022 when deciding relegation places. I'm not quite sure how many relegation places are going. And as you can see, it changes. The league goes up to 28 next season. It's really weird. And I think after that, it changes again. So there's lots of changes. I'm going to do a little bit of Wikipedia, but if you have any knowledge, by all means, help out the people that are watching the channel. Help out me. Put your thoughts, any info regarding the league structure, let me know your thoughts. I may put stuff in my Discord as well, just so people get used to the rules. So by all means, go and check out the Discord links down in the description. All right, guys, that is it. Wednesday's episode, we are going to be starting the League Cup with a double header. We're going to be playing Boca Juniors as the first game with me in charge of Newell's Old Boys and Arsenal D Sarandi as well, a team that we drew with but played pretty well. We should have beaten them in pre-season. Uh, to kick off the League Cup. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Smash the like on today's video. See you on Wednesday. Check out the Patreon content as well. If you could support me as a creator, this is now a part-time job. I would appreciate if you go and check out the Patreon down in the description. You could even get yourself in the game as a regen if you become a Prime Baggio tier member. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you on Wednesday. See you later.